Hi guys, that's as now covered a lot of the basics on quadratics. I do want to do a quick recap on some of the stuff we've learned uh, within the straight line topic that is going to be particularly relevant when we look at something called the axis of symmetry or effectively what is in more general terms called is the line of symmetry. So I'll do a short recap on that just now. All it is that we're going to look at are the vertical and horizontal lines and those equations. Uh, you'll recall that a vertical line has an equation that starts with simply x equals and a horizontal line starts with y equals. So it's not as easy to see at the minute because it's in black, but the green line that we have going horizontally, you can see there that the equation is y equals 3. Uh, and it might... Kind of seem odd now that we're, we're talking about the equation of a line and we're used to seeing y equals mx plus c now these vertical and horizontal lines behave entirely different to that because they don't really have a gradient so um why is it y equals three i'm hoping you'll remember that what we're looking to do is we're looking to see if there's something that each point that lies on that line has in common and if we were to look at the coordinates the x value, or the value that goes left to right, always changes. But the one consistent value is that the y equals 3. So the whole line is represented by y equals 3. Equally, if we were to look at the vertical line in red, each point on the vertical line starts with the coordinate 2, or the x coordinate 2. So that's the con constant, the consistent part, the y changes. So that's why this line is x equals 2. If we were to carry that on and we were to look at another vertical line straight down here, every point on the orange or yellow line that you see there starts with an x equals minus 2. So the equation is x equals minus 2. So just wanted to remind you, particularly on the vertical lines, if it's a straight line up um, through one of the, the, the coordinates on the x-axis, and you know that that coordinate is consistent for every point on the line, then the equation of that line is going to say x equals something. If the y-coordinate is consistent through every point on the line, then the line will have an equation that starts y equals. Another quick recap of what we've covered so far. Um, you have seen, I've mentioned this before, that we've got uh, the graphs of a quadratic or the equation of a quadratic can be written as f of x equals ax squared plus bx or y equals ax squared plus bx, sorry, plus c. Um, we also know that this port part down here, the y-axis, can be written as y equals f of x. Yeah, and sometimes they are interchangeable. So the key things that we were looking at in the, the last lesson was we were taking the equation of the quadratic and we were trying to solve that equation. And what we did to solve that was we just made x squared plus 2x minus 8 equal to 0. So this is important, this is very important, because what that actually means is the thing that we are replacing is we're replacing the y with the 0. So to solve something, we need to make sure y equals 0 for the solutions, and that's just a wee shorthand for solutions. So that's something we're going to explore in, in greater detail, but that's that ties directly into... Um, the previous lesson and what we had done in that situation is we factorized I told you you would then broke into two brackets or a common factor and a bracket and those either the common factor and the bracket or the two individual brackets would create the factors and those factors give us a solution now we mentioned that the solutions and I'll circle them in yellow actually um refer to the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. So the solutions to the equation, what x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0, are the roots 
of the graph. Now, roots and solutions, you'll hear that mentioned and it'll be interchangeable. But what we're going to look at is how do we actually use that to sketch a graph? What do we recognize about those roots as they lie on the, first of all, they lie on the x-axis. So what does that mean for the y-coordinate? And then we're going to have to try and focus on how we arrive at the extra two points you see in the diagram there. One you'll recognize is effectively very similar to the y-intercept that you will have used for the straight line. And the other one lies right in the middle of A and B. Hopefully you'll recognize that. So to complete this type of question, as you see on the on the right hand side there, what I'm saying in the section that I'm just highlighting in green is there's three sections to it. We need to find the points that lie on the x-axis, find something called the turning point, which we'll mention, and the axis of symmetry, and then points that lie on the y-axis. So really, you're looking for the points on the axes, then the turning point and the axis of symmetry. This little point right at the bottom there that we said it's halfway between A and B, we will talk about why that's called a turning point. Um, and I'll do I'll mention it as we go through. But naturally, if the diagram is going to dip to a trough, the point where it turns at the bottom of the trough to go back up is the turning point. We will see situations where the turning point is right at the top where it goes to a peak and it turns and starts going down. Okay, so a couple of key points there. Turn the points, points where it crosses the y-axis and x-axis and something called axis of symmetry. Okay, let's dive straight into example one. Um, so first of all, just to kind of run through some of the key points um, from what we've covered so far, we have the equation y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. That's a positive x squared. So that means we have our smiley face. Okay. And we have a turning point at D. We have our two roots at A and B. And we have a point where it crosses the y-axis or the y-intercept at C. So rather than actually sketching this here, we're going to be um, just finding out the points labeled A, B, and C. Um, but a lot of the skills we'll use will be used exactly the same way when it comes to sketching. Right, so first thing as I went through before was to find the points that lie on the x-axis. And the points on the x-axis occur when y or f of x equals zero. So in other words, what that means we can do is we can take this equation and we can equate it to zero. Or in other words, we can write x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals zero. Okay, now we would then go through our window method where we factorize. I won't revisit that for the time being, but in the notes you'll see the working for that. We should have x plus 4 and x minus 2 as our two brackets. Let's just check that quickly. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 4 times x is positive 4x, add them together we get positive 2x and 4 times negative 2 gives us our negative 8. So absolutely correct to go through the quick check. From there, we've now been through a, quite a lot of these. What we've got is we've got one bracket and two brackets or should I say one factor and a second factor. The first factor is x plus 4 and the second factor is x minus 2. To find the solutions or the roots, we equate each of those individual brackets to zero. So the solutions occur at x plus 4 equals zero and or x minus 2 equals zero. Therefore, x equals minus 4 and x equals 2. Now, we know there's going to be two equations here, uh, two solutions here. Um, because of the nature of the brackets, we can kind of see fortunately in the diagram that we've got um, two solutions or two points where it crosses the x-axis, those are the roots. So what we now need to decide is which one is A, 
which one is B. Okay, so negative 4. If the x value is negative 4, that means we would have moved left from the origin, which I'm marking in red. So in other words, that looks like it's point A. For B, we'll get x equals positive 2. And that means we'll be moving to the right from the origin. And that looks like it's it makes sense. There's a bigger jump left than there is to the right. Now, what we're actually asked for there are the points labeled A, B, and C. So we need to think, what did we already say? We equated the y, or we made the f of x or the y, 0. So in other words, the y point or coordinate for these points is always going to be 0. So actually, the coordinates a, I'm going to start with the negative 4, which we got below, and they are 0 as a y coordinate. b is 2 and 0. And the reason they're both... Um, zero at the end is because they lie on the x-axis. They don't jump off. It's right along there. So minus four, zero, and two, zero. Okay, next look at the turning points. Okay, now you could go and, and have a look for the point C where it cuts the y-axis, but because we've calculated our x as negative four and our uh, a and 2, or in other words, our point A and our point B as negative 4 and 2. I thought it would be quite a good idea to focus now on the turning point and the axis of symmetry. So that distance between the 4 and the negative 2 is going to be the critical element to working out where the middle point is. I and mean, the reason I'm saying it's the middle point is we looked at it before as we had our graph Okay, and we just had the point right at the bottom. Now, yes, we did have our axes like so. But that point right at the bottom, okay, is the turning point. And that turning point there is exactly halfway between A and B. Now, all I've done over here is I've taken away the graph just now to let you see that the difference is actually six because if we were to take four back into zero and then a further two then together they give you six okay so actually the halfway point okay is right down the middle right so what we're looking at again if we take the line here if we consider that this is zero and we've got negative four and two we've got six to split so that's three each side. So we're either going back towards the origin three or we're moving away uh, through the origin three. Okay, or in both occasions we're heading towards the turning point. So if we were to move three forward, that would get us to minus one. Equally, if we were to move three back from two, that would get us to minus one. So it looks like the x coordinate of the turning point is negative one. And if you look up here, I've kind of explained that. Three is half of six. The point's moving either forward from minus three or three back from two. So the x value, and this little section here just shows you the sums that would uh, equate to negative one. So what we're looking at now is we have to take that x value and substitute it into the formula. And this is the point that gets a little bit complex. So you can see the working that I'm now squaring in orange. We've taken from here, x is minus 1. That's the turning point. For every point on a graph, whether it's a straight line or a parabola, there is an equivalent y coordinate for every x coordinate. And we know from functions that if you input an x coordinate, you will receive a f of x or a y. So what this is saying is we're going to put minus 1 in place of the x's. And as you see, we go three, through here, we get minus one squared, which is the same as this first one. And then two times x, or so two times minus one is here. So minus one squared becomes positive one. Two times minus one is negative two. So we've got minus, so we've got positive one, minus two is negative one. Take away eight gives us our negative nine. And therefore, we have our turning point of 
minus 1, minus 9. Now, where does minus 1 and minus 9 come from? The minus 1 comes from the x value. The minus 9 comes from substituting that x value into the formula. Now, equation of the axis of symmetry. This goes right back to the start of the video. And I want to kind of look at that on its own. Okay, we're going through all the working now. We've got our values for A. We had minus 4, 0. We had B was 2, 0. And we've now discovered that this point D is minus 1, minus 9. Now, the key part for the axis of symmetry is this x value. We went through our calculations of halfway between, and we found that this value down here was x equals minus 1. And as I said at the beginning, we've got a vertical line that won't have a gradient, doesn't have a y-intercept, and that there is the equation of the axis of symmetry. So when we're asked for the equation of the axis of symmetry, now we can see that that yellow line I've drawn on the graph is, is like a line of symmetry or an axis of symmetry. For it to be an equation, we need an equal sign. And because every point on this line, every x value, sorry, is minus 1, that's x minus 1, like I mentioned right way back at the beginning. So the shortcut to that is once you find your turning point, the equation of the axis of symmetry is just x equals whatever the x value is for the turning point. Okay, last but not least, uh, we have the points on the y-axis. So, much like with the points on the x-axis, for the points on the x-axis, we made y equal to zero, but this time for the points on the y-axis, as you can see circled in green, we make the x equal to zero. And we use the substitution the same way as we did for finding the y-coordinate for the turning point. We're just going to put x is zero in place of every value of x that we have here. So on the right hand side, you'll see x squared becomes zero squared, two times zero, and therefore take away eight or negative eight. So we end up with zero plus zero, negative eight, we have minus eight, okay? So the coordinate, again, the x value, we decided the x value because it lies on the y-axis, we substituted that x value in to get the y value, and so we have 0 minus 8. So in summary, if we were going to be sketching, this is the same kind of summary we would use. We got our a was negative 4, 0, b was 2, 0, c now is 0 minus 8, and our turn turning point was minus 1, minus 9. The axis of symmetry as we mentioned before, straight from the turning point, it's the x value, so x equals minus 1. Okay, hopefully we'll be able to go through this a little quicker. I'm going to just leave the notes, and the notes will be attached to the video. So, example 2, this time we're actually looking to sketch the graph, okay? So we'll go through our three steps again. We'll find the points that the graph crosses the x-axis to do that we make y equal to zero, so, or f of x equal to zero. So as you can see here, I'll just point to it with the red pointer. We've got y equals to zero. Our equation from the top was 24 plus 2x minus x squared. There is an important step I want to follow through, is we're going to make f of x equal to zero, and this time I've put f of x in to show you that you can use both of them. So obviously when we do the substitution, the zero is going to come to the front. And so I had some questions on this when we were working on the equations. So we've got zero equals 24 plus two X minus X squared. Now, because we're equating it to zero, what it allows us to do is just to flip the values to make that X squared a positive value. Obviously, if it becomes positive, the positive two X becomes negative and the 24 becomes negative. Why would we do that? Just because you might be more comfortable dealing with an x squared when it's positive. So we'll go through our window method, we'd end up with x minus six and x plus four as our factors. 
If we solve for those, we get x equals 6 and x equals negative 4. This is the part we need, we need to get right up to speed with. Once we've got the x values, we set, by doing this bit up here, we set the y value to help us solve it. The y or the f of x is 0. So those x values just become the x coordinate and the y coordinate is zero as always. So we've got our two points. We don't yet have the graph, but we know it should cross at six, zero and negative four, zero. Same idea as before for the turning point and the axis of symmetry. We have negative four and six, which we got before. The difference of which is uh, 10, sorry. So half of that is five. So we're either going to go in this direction with five or this direction, five, which is actually take away five. So if we add five, we get to this point in here, or maybe do it in green, and we end up with x equals one. If we take away five, we also end up with x equals one. So the good thing about that is our axis of symmetry, the equation is x equals one. That gives us our equation of the axis of symmetry. It also allows us to take x equals one, we can then substitute, and this time, into the original. We only rearranged the original so that we could help factorise it. But actually, this is important, and it's going to be important when it comes to sketching. The original equation was 24 plus 2x minus x squared. So if we have f of 1. We have 24 plus 2 times 1. Take away 1 squared. So f of 1 equals 24 plus 2 is 26, take away 1 is 25. So our f of x is 25, our x is 1, so the turning point is 1, 25. And that is what I want you to think about. That looks like it's a pretty high value. Why do we want to think? Why is it? could it be a high value? I want you to think about why that's the case. We've got a negative x squared. What does that say about how the graph's going to look? And we will get to that once we get our summary done. Okay, final step again. We've got this time where it crosses the, the y-axis. We know that it crosses the y-axis at x equals 0. So again, substitute 0 in place of the x. We'll go through, as you can see here, we've got 24 plus 2 times 0. Take away 0 gives us our 24. The coordinates for the the point where it cuts the y-axis is therefore going to start with zero because we dictated that it was zero and we've now calculated it's 24. Okay, so 0, 24. That gives us quite an, a neat summary. We've got negative 4, 0 and 6, 0 as our points where it crosses the x-axis. Our points that crosses the y-axis is 0, 24. We have our turning point at 1, 25. We have the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Now, I'm going to do a little rough sketch of what it is I'm looking to do. Um, but that's not actually... I'm going to move on and I'll show you a kind of neater version of this because I'm unlikely to get it absolutely ideal. So, very roughly, at this moment in time, if we have, first of all, our axes. So we've got to get our axes right. Remember the question was x and f of x. Okay, so that is very easy for you to slip up and, and have a y in there. So what I would suggest is a couple of things when you're sketching. First of all, think about your equation. We had f of x equals 24 plus 2x minus x squared. And this is what I'd mentioned earlier. This portion minus x squared tells us it's going to be a sad face okay so let's think about that that explains what i mentioned previously about the turning point having quite a high f of x value or a high y value however now don't worry about getting your sketches absolutely perfect sometimes you'll have blank paper sometimes you'll have squares the best place to start is first of all get your points that cross your, your roots where it crosses the x-axis. We've got minus 4. So if we're taking minus 4 here, then that's a smaller distance back to the origin than we're going to have for the 6. 
So just expand the six a little. So it looks like it's almost perfect. Now I've drawn a kind of very rough version here because we know we're going to parabola and I managed it not all that bad. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a sad face, not exactly perfectly symmetrical. Don't panic, you'll not be able to do it perfect every time. Now, where are our key points now? We've got our two roots. We need our turning point. So this was our turning point. Okay, almost as high as it can be. We said that was 125. Now, does that mean that this point where it cuts the y-axis, does that make sense? It's slightly below 25, so that would be 24. So it starts to look like we're in the right direction. And then our axis of symmetry would be down here. This would be one, slightly off with a rough sketch. We've got our four key points. We've got our roots. We've got our turning point, and we've got our y-intercept. We don't necessarily need to mark the axis of symmetry, but we've done that anyway. Okay, I'm going to show you a kind of neater version of that in the next slide. Right, then, as you can see, there's your summary with all the key points labelled. And like I mentioned before, please don't panic about your sketch. Do it with a pencil. Take your time. Um, you're not going to get it absolutely spot on every time. Um, but if we, if we go through those points, find where the, we cross the x-axis, find the turning point, the axis of symmetry, find the y, where we cross the y-axis. And it doesn't necessarily matter in which order. You can do the y-axis second and then the turning point and the axis of symmetry at the end. But hopefully, um, I do have additional questions uh, that I can go through. So hopefully those two examples will, will see you fit just now. But if we need any additions, uh, we can do that.